All right. Now, what have we been talking about here on Wednesday night for the last few weeks? That's a question. What have we been talking about on Wednesday night for the last? Thank you. <laughs> Crickets. Yeah, so we've been talking about the Word. We've been talking about our words, and we've been talking about the power of the Word. Amen. And um, I just want to talk to us tonight. Remember that we're not going to have service next Wednesday night because it's um, uh, Christmas Eve. And then we won't have um, service the following Wednesday night either because that's New Year's Eve. But then we'll be back in a couple weeks, and that will give my, me some time to continue to meditate in the Word and see where we're going to go. But um, for tonight, let's just talk about using your words wisely. For uh, many of you, over the course of the next week or two, you will be around family members that maybe you don't see often or that you, uh, you know, purposefully don't see often. <laughs> um, and you'll, be, you'll have a lot of opportunity to use your words wisely, amen? And, um, and so I just, you know, thought that tonight this lesson would be a good lesson for all of us as we go into this holiday season and we're around people who maybe, um, you know, we love and we, we value them, but maybe they don't quite stand in that same place of faith and understanding of the word as we do and so they say a lot of things that you know are negative or they say a lot of things that they shouldn't say or they just you know just drama 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 so a lot of times you know holidays are wonderful but then they put us in positions to be around people that we otherwise would not choose to hang around with all the time so it's an important time for us to remember to use our words wisely Amen. all right so um you know, we've talked a good bit um, in the past about how words carry power and, and words, um, you know, carry creativity, right? And words are lasting things. Um, you know, words are carriers. They're containers of feelings, of emotions, of memories. Um, you know, there's so many things that are triggered by words. And just to kind of prove this out, I have just a little test for y'all tonight, all right? So I'm going to say some phrases, and I'm going to stop, and you're going to fill in the blanks for me, okay? So when I pause and I point, then you fill in the blanks with what you think goes there, okay? Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? All right. All right, let's try this one. To be or not to be? That is the question. All right, good. How about this one? Ask not what you can do for your country, but what... Oh, sorry. See, I got it wrong. <laughs> Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Okay, good. See, I got it wrong. I, didn't, I, I needed to just say it instead of read it because that messed me up. All right, how about this one? Luke, I am your... There you go. <laughs> how about this one? An apple a day? Good. How about this one? Slow and steady? Wins the race. Good. Um, Y'all ought to remember this one from being a, a young person. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Tiger by his toe, right? All right. Let's see, let's see where we really are. We are in Franklin County right here, right? So let's see if y'all can get this one, okay? If you have a complete set of salad bowls and they all say Cool Whip on the side, you might be a redneck. There you go. <laughs> I knew people would know that one. How about this one? With great power comes great responsibility. responsibility. Yeah, and that one, you know, it's really Voltaire who said that or Spider-Man, just depending on whichever way you, you go, okay? Um, all is fair in love. All right. Um, if I say blank, my dear Watson, you would say? Elementary. Elementary, my dear Watson, yes. If I say blank, James blank. There you go. <laughs> How about, there's no place like home. Good. Um, let's see if you guys know this one. Walking with a friend in the dark is better than walking alone in the light. Right? Yeah, some of you know that one. Okay. How about this? We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are... Excellent. Good. Yeah. See, we need to at least know that as well as we know Star Wars, right? So, I mean, if, if, we're, if we're, we're good with that, if we at least know, you know, part of the declaration as well as we know, Luke, I am your father, right? Um, all right. How about this one? Off with her head. Yes. Okay. And, uh, and then here's this last one. Sticks and stones may break my bones. 
<laughs> right, and that's a lie. And you know, really, just this little, this fun little quiz is proof of that being a lie. Because if you can remember, you know, words and phrases and sayings from culture, from pop culture, from our history, um, forever, you remember things from when you were a child. You know, little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them, you know. So, I mean, if you, if you remember these things for so long, then that really is just a testimony or a testament to how powerful words are. All words are containers. And, you know, words, when they, when they contain things, they, we choose, as Christians, as born-again believers, we choose what our words contain. We choose, do they contain life, right, or do they contain death? We choose that. And, you know, words are, are containers. They're memory containers, all right? So, I mean, I can remember things that, um, that were said to me as a person, as a, as a young person growing up. I can remember things that were said to me that were very hurtful. And, you know, here as a grown person, some 30 years, even 40 years later, I can still remember those things. And when I remember those things, they hurt still, okay? Um, when, you know, when we have had instances in our life when someone has looked right at us and with just sincere, you know, just, just pure love, and they have looked us right in the eyes and they have said, I love you, I am so proud of you. Well, we can remember those things as well. Years and years later, those good things, those valuable things, you know, if you ask people, like, what's the best piece of wisdom or advice that your grandma or your dad or your mom or whatever, whoever, some important person ever gave you, you know, a lot of times we can just say those things right back because they meant something to us. Those words were containers, and they were containers of life to us, okay? And so, um, you know, we need, to, we need to really keep that in mind that if words are so memorable then we need to use our words wisely. If words are containers, and if words, when they, when they contain, um, you know, when they contain, they, all words contain some kind of power. It doesn't necessarily mean all words contain God's power. But words, that become, just by the nature of their design, they create, all right? We talked about this a few weeks ago. God chose to use words to create the universe. He chose words. He could have, because he's God, he could have chosen anything. He could have chosen snap, you know. I mean, he could have wiggled his nose. He could have, you know, he could have blinked his eyes. He could have done anything, right? I mean, he's, he's, he's God, and so he could have chosen any way at all to create, but he chose words. And because he chose words, then we have to, we have to keep that in mind, that the words that we say are so powerful. And, you know, I had even an example of this today. But today was a teacher work day. Um, and those days I always feel like two and three times longer than just a regular day with kids, I'm just saying. Um, but at one point, you know, I was, I was in a meeting all day long. And at one point, you know, in the meeting, I said something to one of my coworkers there. And she and I have a good relationship. I mean, we went to school back together way back in the day when I was, you know, she, she's the only person around here that actually is a living witness to me, the 17, 18-year-old me, <laughs> and, and she still works right next door to me, so it's okay, um, but anyway, but, you know, she, you know, she, we were, you know, trying to problem solve some things, and I, um, I said something to her, I said, hey, you know, what's that face, what's that face about, what's wrong, what's wrong, you know, you're, you got that face, what's going on, except for the way that I said it kind of sounded more accusatory than what I actually meant. What I was really trying to say is we don't want to move on until you say or share whatever it is that you're thinking. You know, there's something going on here. And it, and it got her really flustered, you know. And I regretted it as soon as I said it that way. And I didn't, because I didn't mean it to be like, you know, there's something wrong with you. What I meant was, okay, hold it. We got to pause because she's, you know, problem solving something. She's, you know, kind of, I was trying to help her kind of spit it out, you know. But, and what I ended up doing was I shut her down. And just because of the way I said words, you know. And, and we have, to, and it just, and I thought, wow, what are you teaching on tonight? This is what I'm teaching on tonight. And, you know, and here, here's a good example of that, that we all need practice. I mean, you know, try to be, you tr we try to be aware of the things that we say and the way in which we say things because the tone in which we say something is definitely going to impact the meaning. You know, if, when my kids were growing up, if I said, um, if I said, Davey, can you come here a minute? Well, then he was like, you know, ready to come on in. You know, he'd, you know, what's up, mom? You know, that kind of thing. If I said, David, come here. 
well, that was a whole different thing, right? I mean, you just, you know, just the way that you say, the way you say something, the tone that you use is just a whole different, whole different response. And, um, and those, those things, you know, they can really stick for a long, long time. And um, so I think that, you know, in this, in this time of reflection, in this time of us launching into this next year, you know, I mean, I always try to take some time here at the end of the year, beginning of the first year, okay, what, hap what worked well for me this last year, you know, in all areas of my life, spiritually, at work, you know, in every way, you know, what worked well, what didn't work well. Well, I feel like I have I lost some of the control over my mouth that I had had for a long time. I, I allowed myself to, to start to um, fall into, you know, some things and say things and, and not really, you know, look at, not really put a guard over my lips and make sure that not only the words that I'm saying, but the way that I say things, that they really come out the way that I would want them to. And if they're not going to come out the way that I want them to, then to have enough wisdom to not say them. Okay. And so, um, you know, I'm not going to be, I'm determined already, a purpose in my heart. I'm not going to be one of those older people that just blurts out any old thing they want to say and then blames it on their age, you know. Because, um, you know, I've had older relatives that have been like that. You know, you just can't go around grandma because, I mean, not my, gra not my grandma, but you just can't go around grandma because you never know what she's going to say, you know, because she's going to let it all hang out. Well, the, the, per the point of that is, is that she always wanted to let it all hang out. She always wanted to say all those things. And now that she's older, she's just using that for an excuse. So at least that's my theory, but, you know, give me another 30 years and we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, so anyway, so I want us to talk tonight about, you know, using our words wisely. And so just to do that, I mean, I know we know these scriptures, but I, I, I really want us to look at them again. So go with me, first of all. So first, why do we need to do that? Why do we need to use our words wisely? Well, because God did. God did. Okay, go with me to Genesis chapter 1. I feel like, you know, so often what we do is, especially with the Old Testament, and maybe with all of the Word of God, but especially with the Old Testament, I feel like we, we get into, like, bedtime story mode. You know, I mean, we read the Word, and we think about it like a story, and we don't really think about what this Word is, even though it's very familiar, what is it telling me that I need to do right now today? What is it telling me that I need to know? How, 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 how am I accountable for this Word today? You know, so how are we accountable for Genesis chapter 1 today? Because we're still accountable for that, right? It's the Word. So we're still accountable for that. And one way that we are is to take this as the model. So if you look at, um, let's just look at verse 2, Genesis 1, 2. It said, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. God and this, God and his, in his spirit, God and his spirit were hovering over this void, all right? And he wanted something different than the void that was there. Well, I have a void in my life. I got the spirit of God on the inside of me, right? Many of you have voids in your life. You got the spirit of God inside of you. So what we need to do is we need to follow the pattern that he had. So here's this void, there's this cavity, there's this cavern, there's this waste place. There's a place where there's chaos and confusion. There's a place where there's nothing tangible that can bring forth life. It's just this place. And his spirit hovered over that place and he spoke, all right? So when we have waste places in our life, when we have those places of chaos and confusion, when we have those places where it doesn't seem like anything's coming together, I mean, you know, I mean, Mr. T is just nowhere around, right? I mean, not this Mr. T, but Mr. T. I love it when a plan comes together, you know. So, you know, he's, but it just looks like nothing's coming together. It looks like there's just, you know, all hell is breaking loose. Anybody else been there besides me? I mean, you know, just all hell is breaking loose. And, you know, in that place, rather than reacting unwisely we need to react in the same way that God did over the original chaos and confusion when we allow that spirit of God that's on the inside of us instead to instead of us having this reaction where we I don't know what to do I don't know what you know I don't what am I going to do you know or getting depressed or getting you know just whatever instead of doing that just reacting the way God did and allowing the our spirit man on the inside of us to speak out what it is that we need in that, in that area. And the very first thing that God said was, he said, God said, let there be light. And there was light. 
And guys, that is the very first thing. I'm just thinking of this now, so I know it's Holy Ghost. That is the very first thing that we have to speak over the voids in our life. Let there be light. Let there be illumination. Let there be revelation. Let there be light in this situation so that I might see clearly. Okay? Let there be light so that what is hidden in the darkness is now seen and revealed. Let there be light in this situation. In the name of Jesus, let there be light. All right? So, you know, we, if we are to speak wisely in our lives, then rather than just looking at this massive, you know, void and confusion or whatever the problem is, whatever you want to call your problem or in whatever way you want to look at your problem, for some people it's, you know, a whirlwind, for some people it's a tornado, for some people it's a sinkhole that opens up underneath their house and sucks everything down. I mean, whatever, you know, disaster, you know, you, you want to picture in your mind for your own, per, you know, personal situation, just know that we, if we're going to be wise speakers, then we need to speak, let there be light, okay? And then, after that, if you jump down to verse 6, then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters. Well, what is he talking about, a firmament? He's talking about solid ground, Mm -hmm. you know? Let there be let there be some solid ground here in the midst of the waters. Well, that's, we need to speak that, Okay, we need a solid ground. Take me to the rock <laughs> that, is, that is most high. You know, let my feet stand on that solid ground instead of sinking sand, right? I mean, let me, I need to be in that place that is solid. I need that solid place to appear in the midst of this situation. I need that solid place so I can firmly put my foot down. I can stand firmly in the midst of this situation. I've got to have a place to stand. And so, you know, when we're in that place, then that's what we speak out. If we're wise, that's what we'll say, okay? Instead of just, I don't know what to do or where to start. Yes, you do. You start with the Word. You start with the Word. You start with speaking the way that God spoke, okay? And, um, you know, and he said, you know, and he continues here, then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place and the dry land appear. And, you know, it's the same. I mean, the firmament, I guess the firmament is the division of, you know, the waters from space. And then, you know, the, the atmospheric difference there is really um, with that one. And so, but that's the same thing. You know, you got to speak to the atmosphere, right? You got to speak to that atmosphere and you got to command that atmosphere to divide the chaos and confusion from the place of creation that God would have us create and then the dry ground. And then God said in verse 11, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb that yields seed. He said, come up, life, all right? Well, when we're, that's what we do. We, ha- we had that chaos and confusion. We said, let there be light in this situation so I can see. Let this, you know, let the environment be conducive so that there's, an env- there's a, a, a situation here that produces life that's separate from all this situation out here that's, ca- that's chaotic. Let there be a dry, solid place for me to stand on and let that dry, solid place start bringing forth life. Come on, life, come up. Come up, life. Come up right here in this ground, right here in the middle of this situation. Come up, life. All right, that's what God is saying, right? And then, you know, he goes on and he talks about um, let there be, you know, those permanent lights that, you know, the stars and the, the moon and the sun, you know, so let there be that, um, that illumination that will continue, really. You know, when he's talking about, you know, the, the lights that are going to give light by day and light by night, and it's continuous illumination. Okay, so now we have light on the situation you know, we've, we're, we're speaking an atmosphere conducive to life into the situation. We're speaking a solid place to stand. We're speaking life into that solid place. And now we're speaking continued illumination here, continued, continued illumination. If we're going to be wise, that's what we need to do. And then God goes on and he says in verse 20, then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures. Again, we just, you know, we, we have, we're speak, have the opportunity to continue to speak life and more life into the, whatever the situation is. And then in verse 24, that that life would multiply, okay? Then the life that we, that we speak into that ground that, you know, we have, we speak into that, our surroundings, the life then, the life of God would begin to multiply and take over, okay? So that it take, completely takes over that place that was once chaos, that, that place that is now a fruitful, productive environment, separate from all the rest of the universe, 
okay? I mean, Earth, think about it. Planet Earth is separate from all the rest of the universe. We're shielded from the rest of the universe, the chaos by our atmosphere. We are, we are and, and in this Earth, then, is conducive to life, okay? And so, you know, but the way that all of those things happened was God said it. And so, you know, the, so that first point about us, if we are going to, you know, speak wisely, we need to do as he did, okay? We can't, we can't just look at this as like this is the creation story. That's, the, that's what we do. We say, well, there's the creation story in the Bible. It's not just a story. It is for us to live by today, right now, today. You know, this is how you go back to Genesis 1 and you apply it to your life today. It's not something that's just ancient history. It's a pattern. God speaks. He, he, his word is filled with patterns and principles that we are to base our life on now. And that, that's from the very beginning all the way through to the very end, right? Amen. It's not just for us to think about, oh, this is our history. This is where we came from. No, this is what I need to do right now today because I got all hell breaking loose around me. This is what I do, Amen. okay? So if we're going to speak wisely, we need to do as God did. And then turn with me to John chapter 1. John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word. Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, okay? He was in the beginning with God. Well, how do we know that? Well, because we just read it. He said, that Word that He said, that's the Word, right? That's the creative power. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And now flip over to verse 14. It says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Okay, Jesus Christ is the living Word, the living Word. God's word, the same word that was spoken in the beginning, is the same word that put on human form and became our Savior. It's the same word. So that, that word that God, that the Spirit of God hovers over the deep and he speaks that word out, that word is Jesus. Okay? That word that, you know, we have, well, who, whose spirit do we have on the inside of us? We have it. Our, our human spirit is the spirit of Christ. The Spirit, right? <clears throat> we are all partakers of Christ. Christ is the head and we are the body. Okay? We are one with him because we have his spirit on the inside of us. Our human nature, our human spirit, not our human nature, but our, our born-again spirit is the spirit of Christ. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Okay? And what glory is that? Well, it's the glory that we just talked about here. We beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The glory that brought forth the illumination. The glory that brought forth the, 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 the separation from the chaotic environment to the peaceful environment. The glory that brought forth the dry land. The glory that brought forth the life in the dry land. The glory that brought forth continuous illumination, right? The glory that brings forth multiplied life. That's the spirit of Christ. We have that spirit of Christ on the inside of us. God spoke wisely because he spoke Jesus. He spoke that spirit of Christ. If he did that, we have the opportunity to do that when we operate out of our spirit instead of out of our flesh. Because we have that ability as human beings, we can, you know, we can speak out of our spirit. We can minister out of our spirit, right? We can sing with the spirit. We can sing with our understanding. We can talk with the spirit. We can talk with our understanding, right? We can, and we can minister, we can, we can speak words that edify, encourage, you know, and exhort, or we can speak death. The death that we speak does not come from our born-again spirit. It comes from the human nature, the old nature. It comes from, you know, the founder of that, the devil, all right? So we speak life or we speak death. But, you know, if we're going to speak wisely, then we need to understand that God spoke wisely. Okay? 
And then we also need to understand, number two, then we need to understand, well, God spoke wisely and Jesus spoke wisely. So look at, we're right here in John. Let's go over to John chapter 6. Got a few verses to look at here in John. Thank you, Father. All right, so John chapter 6, verse 63. Red letters, right? So John 6, 63 says, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. Okay? So Jesus spoke wisely, and the words that he spoke were spirit and life. And when he tells us, you know, go and do likewise, you know, these things that I have done, the great, you know, these things you will do, and greater things than this will you do, because I go to my Father who is in heaven. I mean, he's, he's given us, when he gave, when he... he facilitated our born-again spirit, right, because he was willing to sacrifice himself. He was willing to lay down his life for us so that we might also be partakers of his spirit. Then he gives us willingly the ability to speak forth spirit and life just like he did. Jesus spoke spirit and life. Go to John 14. John 14, verse 10 says, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. See, Jesus, in his wisdom, understood that he and the Father were one, and the word that God spoke from the beginning, even though it was Jesus, right, the the God, the Son, God the Father, God the Son, and God Holy Spirit are all one. They're, they're one. They're three in one. And so, you know, he's, he's speaking to that here because he's, you know, he's just acknowledging the fact that, you know what? I'm in the Father. The Father's in me. We're one. <laughs> my, his words, you know, I just, you know, the words that I speak, they're not my authority. They're his authority because he and I are one. Our words are one. He says, in the, in, he says, I have honored my word even above my name. Why? Because his word is himself. Amen. His word is him. G, it, God, G, God the Father, God the Son are, the, are one. And God the Son is the word. So God is his word. Amen. He's not separate from his word. He is his word. And so, you know, if we understand that, that, you know, that, that God and you know, God the Father, God the Son, they're in one. And then Jesus prays later. We're not going to necessarily look at that right now, but we will look. Here, look over at um, John 15. Turn over to John 15, verse 7, where he says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Well, his, who are his words? Whose words are his words? And the Father's words, right? Because he just said, my words are my Father's words. Well, here he says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, well, whose word is his word? The Father's word. The Father's word is in him. And he's saying, if you abide in me, then my word will abide in you. Well, who's his word? Is the word of the Father, the word of the Son, the word of the Holy Spirit. Is abiding on the inside of me if I abide in him. If I live on the if I live my life in Christ, if I if I purpose in my heart that I'm living my life in Christ because I have believed on him, he is my Lord, my Savior, my master. Amen. And if I follow after what his word tells me, if I don't let the word of God go to the wayside in my life, then I am living out that word. I'm living well and I'm living wisely because that word is in me. It's the living word. God the Spirit of God, the Word of God is, is in me. Your spirit, your born-again spirit is designed as the Word. Right? It's the Spirit of Christ. Well, who is Christ? It's the Word. So could you say that, you know, I've got the Word living on the inside of me? Yes, you can. All right. Now, so we want to speak wisely because God spoke wisely. Jesus spoke wisely. Amen? Amen? All right. So if that's our goal, then we need to think about, okay, well, where have we been? <laughs> Turn with me to Proverbs. 
Always dangerous to go to Proverbs when you're talking about words. We could start at the very beginning of Proverbs and just work our way all the way through and just look at all the verses that talk about the words. Words, words, words. There are good words and there are bad words, right? So let's, um, let's start with, we'll just start with Proverbs chapter 12. And just because, you know, it's Christmas season, and I want to be kind to all of you, then I have like 10 pages worth of all of these words that are, you know, lots of them here found in Proverbs that'll just cut us all to shreds, and I just narrowed it down to a couple. <laughs> Lest I be accused of being Ebenezer Scrooge. <clears throat> right. Okay, so let's look at Proverbs 12. Um, We'll just look at uh, verse 22 and 23. So it says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims foolishness. Okay? Fools speak forth foolishness. Doesn't that just make sense? If you are a fool, then you're going to speak foolishness. Foolishness is going to come out of you if foolishness is in you, right? (laughs) What does the New Testament say? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you have foolishness in your heart, in abundance, then that's what's going to come out of you. My favorite story I ever heard about that particular verse was um, years ago when um, one of the first times I ever heard Kenneth Copeland speaking. And he was talking about that verse, out of, the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And he was talking about the importance of our words and so forth. And he was talking about how he was, you know, he has airplanes. He's big into airplanes and stuff. So he was in the hangar at his ministry, and um, he had some people there, and he was showing them, you know, some of the airplanes or an airplane, something along those lines. And, you know, but people who were working for him didn't necessarily know he was there in the hangar. And so this one of the guys who was a mechanic guy, he was working on, you know, working there in one of the planes, and he stood up and started, you know, to try to go around the airplane and just, you know, you know how you lose place of where you are. And so the wing there just whacked him right in the head. And he went, oh, and said a bad word, okay? And, you know, he's, he's ducking under the, the wing of the plane, and he stands up after he's just, you know, yelled out that bad word, holding on his head, and there's Brother Copeland standing right there. <laughs> <clears throat> and he's like, oh, Brother Copeland, I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry you heard me say that. And, and Brother Copeland's like, that's okay, brother. You know what the word says. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and now I just know what's in you in abundance. <laughs> right? Think about what he said. That's what's in him. You're just full of, you know what. <clears throat> You're full of that because that's what came out of your mouth, right? So, I mean, but we... But we don't think about those things. We don't think about how the things that come out of our mouth just show people what's in us. You know, so if I say stuff that I shouldn't say, it's, you know, standing, coming behind that and saying, I didn't really mean that. Yes, you did. It was in you. You said it. It came out. You said it. It's there. Well, how do you get rid of it? Well, that's all another lesson. You know, that's where, that's where we start talking about praying in tongues and mortification indefinitely you know i mean that's just that's 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 how you get rid of that but um flip over to uh, proverbs 15 verse 2 says the tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly but the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness now come on now all of y'all have known people that they just cannot open their mouth without saying the stupidest things that you ever heard right i mean there are people, I know people that whose brains completely disconnect. As soon as their mouth starts moving, their brain just disconnects. They, I mean, they're saying stuff, and you, and you stand there looking at them thinking, surely this person is not as stupid as they're sounding. You know, I mean, they just completely, like, disconnect their brain from what's pouring forth out of their mouth. And unfortunately, there have been times, not a whole lot, hopefully, but there have been times where I've been that same stupid person. 
you know, I just, you, you just, you know, you spill forth your ignorance. You know, what's that, that saying that it's, you know, better to uh, keep your mouth closed and let people think that you're a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt, right? <laughs> so, I mean, there are times where it's better for you just to be quiet, you know, why? So that when you open your mouth, you know, you just, the things that you say are not foolish, all right? Um, you know, my kids, they're, um, I've got two boys, and they're, they're very competitive, okay? And I guess, I don't know if all boys are competitive or not. I don't know. But um, I've got two boys. They're very competitive with each other. So it does not matter that now that they're, you know, more grown, right? They're in their early 20s. But they do the same thing now as they did all the time growing up. You know, we get together all together, and one of them will tell a story about something that just happened. Well, the other one's got to tell something that's, you know, bigger than that. And then the, other, the first one will tell something, and then the next one will tell something. And I'm standing there, and then my husband jumps in, so we got all three of them. <laughs> and they're all, they're all telling all this stuff, and I'm sitting there thinking, I'm the only woman in the house, right? And all the time I'm thinking, now I know about, you know, three-fourths of this stuff is not even true. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just got you going. You know, it got them going. They're on a roll now, and they're just going to keep talking. And, you know, I'll just, I'll just stand back, and, I, I mean, I laugh, I mean, it's, you know, but still what happens is it's hard to shut those things off sometimes, you know. I mean, people talk. Y'all know people who just, they feel like they are, they are compelled to say something just because someone else is saying something. And does that not just irritate you, right? I mean, you know, you can't have a conversation. You can't, you know, express anything around some people because they're going to just talk right over the top of you. They're not going to listen to what you say. They're just going to come back and they're going to say, well, all of that is foolishness. And so, you know, that just means, you know, they are people who are full of themselves. Why? Because they're talking about themselves. That's all they talk about. They're talking about themselves. So those people that y'all are around this week when you're over at Christmas, whatever, and that's, you know, people just, you know, they're just, you know, just give them their space. They're full of themselves. They're full of all kinds of stuff. You know, they're just full of whatever. And just realize that, you know, but if you want to be different from them, then you need to think about how you're going to respond, okay, or not respond. So being quiet sometimes is sometimes the best thing, right? So, you know, when we're talking about using our words wisely, we just need to take a lesson from the fools. And like I said, there are lots of verses in Proverbs specifically that talk about fools and foolish words and, you know, how fools come to their folly through their words. And, you know, we could take, you know, a couple weeks just to go through Proverbs and just, you know, look at all of those. But I just want that point to stick with us that, if we are going to use our words wisely, then what we should do is we should examine the fools that we have in our lives. We all have them, okay? We should look at the way in which their words entrap them and ensnare them and trip them up and tangle them up and have brought them to their ruin in a lot of times. People who have no relationships because of the words that they say. People who have lost, you know, many things in their life, happiness, joy, peace, you know, because of the words that they say. You know, people who are always down, what you would call the expression down in the mouth, you know, everything that they have to say is negative. Well, that's the reason your life is the way it is, is because that's what you keep saying. And for the most part, my experience has been that those people don't want to hear you tell them to start saying good things. Let's, let's go to Proverbs, I mean, to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Think on these things, whatsoever is good, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is of a good report. These are the things that you're going to think. They don't want to hear that because they get some kind of, you know, some kind of satisfaction out of being, being able to speak in that negative way and get that negative attention. Well, you know, that gets frustrating to me. I don't like being around negative people. And, you know, so, and I have family members that are like that, that when they talk and when they talk about things, all the things that they do, everything's very negative. So, you know, what do you do? I mean, you just, while you're there, you know, you pray in tongues under your breath, you, you know, you just, you know, you interject whatever you can that's, you know, be salt and light, you know, you interject whatever you can. But for the most part, you just recognize that they have made that choice for themselves, and I feel for them, but it is their decision. You know, I mean, I can feel badly for people I, and, you know, I, I would even work with people like this, that they are always just, it's negative, 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 so much so that they're, you know, the, when, as they get older, their faces are all, everything's downturned. You know, they look like, 
droopy dog, you know, I mean, they're just, or that angry cat that's a meme on, you know, the internet, you know, that grumpy cat, that's, yeah. So they, you know, but they look, they, their faces even start to model, you know, to look like what comes out of them all the time, right? And, I mean, you can always tell people who smile a lot because even when they're not thinking about stuff, they're just, I mean, their faces just kind of smile, you know? Um, so anyway, so we need to just, you know, instead of, um, we need to make sure that as we are, you know, endeavoring to speak wisely that, you know, we can just take a lesson from the fools that, who are around us. So still here in Proverbs, let's, um, let's go back to, for a second, let's go back to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs is also full of all kinds of lessons on how to speak wisely. It's not just all about foolish words, but it's also about how to speak wisely. So in Proverbs 10, <clears throat> let's look at, uh, start in verse 30. It says, the righteous will never be removed. But the wicked will not inherit, or I'm sorry, the wicked will not inhabit the earth. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut out. Okay, the mouth of the righteous brings forth what? Wisdom. But the perverse tongue will be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked, what is perverse. And so, you know, if what we need to do is we need to be able to tell the difference. You know, I mean, we need to be able to tell the difference when we are choosing what to say. We need to know the difference between what is acceptable and what's not acceptable. We need to know the difference between what is righteousness, that we can speak forth righteousness because that brings forth wisdom. When you speak forth righteousness, then wisdom comes with that. Why? Because of what we said in the beginning. Words are containers, okay? And words have that creative power. So when I speak forth words that are the righteousness of God, then wisdom shows up. You know, this is why, this is why confession confessing the word out loud is so important. It's so important to us because, you know, you might, with your natural mind, you might not have understanding of what to do in a situation. But if you say out loud, with your mouth, with words, because those words are creating circumstances when we speak them out, you say, I have the mind of Christ, you know, or you say, um, you know, you say, I have knowledge of witty inventions, or you say, um, you know, whatever it is that you're, that you're speaking in that situation, you speak that out, well, then it begins to create. So all of a sudden, understanding comes to you. Well, where did that come from? It came from the, the words that you spoke. You know, if you speak out righteousness, if you start to, if you meditate on who you are in Christ, and you speak that out. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, right? God has made me to be partakers of Christ's righteousness. He, if you, you, know, you take those who I am in Christ scriptures and you say those about yourself, then you're speaking forth the righteousness of God, and with that comes wisdom. The righteous of God are not without wisdom. Jesus was not without wisdom. Okay, God is not without wisdom. God's righteousness brings with it wisdom. How many of y'all need wisdom in situations in your life right now? Okay? Wisdom, right? Lord, I need wisdom. I need direction. If any man asks of the Lord, okay, then, you know, the Lord will give him this wisdom, right? I need to, I need to know what to do. Hold on just a second. I want to look at this. Because it just came to me and I wasn't, I'm not saying it quite right and I want to say it. This is James chapter 1 verse 5 and it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. Okay, well righteousness brings wisdom and so, you know, we need to make sure that we are speaking forth that righteousness, Right? We need to make sure that we are speaking forth that, those things, so that wisdom comes forth. Let's look at Proverbs um, chapter 12 again, and we'll read um, verses 18 and 19. We read 23 a little while ago. Um, for, well, let's start with 17. He who speaks truth declares righteousness. And what does righteousness bring? 
wisdom, okay? So he who speaks truth declares righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. Y'all know people who can just cut people down with their tongue. You know, I mean, you know people that they're just so, they're quick-witted, they're sharp. I'm in, I, was, I think I was born with that. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't get into a lot of fights, fist fights kind of things when I was growing up. I mean, I, I did. I mean, we were, Apostle David, when he was talking about fighting the other day, you know, I just, and talking about bullies and, you know, that kind of stuff. I just, you know, went back and I shared my own little story with him. And he's like, he's got a whole church full of fighters. Everybody's talking about fighting people, you know. But, um, you know, because Anessa chimed in, you know, she, you know, used to scrap with people or whatever, you know, too. And James chimed in. So, you know, but got a lot of fighters in the church. But, you know, I only got in, um, besides with my brother, that doesn't count, okay. But I only got into two fights in my life, you know, otherwise, the other kind of fights. But I could say some stuff. I mean, I was vicious with the words that I that I could say that would just cut, 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 cut. And especially when um, my kids were little, I found myself, you know, because I was, I was still really a young Christian when, you know, Dave and I got married, and then I had kids, and I was starting to raise kids, and I found myself often saying things that I really wish that I had not said, and I hadn't said them in that way, because that was the way that it came to me, you know. And so, you know, that's something that, you know, you really, really have to work on, especially people who have that quick comeback, you know, that snappy, snappy comeback thing. It can be all good and fun for a while, and then all of a sudden, you know, somebody has gotten hurt. And, you know, and it's hurtful. You know, words like that are hurtful. And so, you know, the word says, the word says here, there's one who speaks like the piercings of a sword. Well, don't be that person that, you know, that, that saying, cut somebody down. Well, that's, you know, where that comes from. Don't, don't be that person. But instead, the tongue of the wise promotes health. And I'm talking about all kinds of health. Physical health, right? Emotional health. Um, you know, when you speak forth the word of God and it's speaking forth life, when you're speaking forth wisdom to somebody, then it promotes that health, health in your relationship, health in your, I mean, even just, you know, if you have, if you have a relationship that is strained in some way, no matter how you're feeling, because those feelings can overpower you to where you don't want to say anything good. If I open my mouth at all, I'm going to say something bad, you know. I'm going to say something snarky. I'm going to say something rude. I'm going, to, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. Well, don't do that. Instead, speak forth some things that you want to see in that relationship. You know, sometimes it was the, when, especially when, you know, the, the year two to two years that was the toughest time between my oldest son and me, sometimes it was all I could do just to make myself say out loud, you know, I love you, and I believe in the plan that God has for your life. I love you. Because I certainly, I didn't like him. I mean, can I just say that? I didn't like him. I didn't like him at all. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I just, you know, not too long ago, we were out at dinner, and I just looked at him, and I said, you know what, son? I just really like you. And he goes, well, you know, you're supposed to. You're my mom. I said, honey, I hadn't always liked you. (laughs) You know, I've always loved you, but I have not always liked you, but I just really like you, you know. And, um, and so, but, you know, we need, to, we need to speak forth no matter what that chaos is, you know, that's rolling around in our life like we talked about at the beginning. We need to be like God and speak forth that, um, that, those words that will promote health. And then verse 19 here says, The truthful lips shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. We read that one before. Um, and then let's go, where are we going? Did we read? chapter 10 verse 31 already we just did that one all right so that's you know words for the wise words this these verses that we just read were about um you know the wise person when the tongue of the wise promotes health all right the tongue of the wise promotes wisdom um let's look at another reason to speak wisely let's just look at we don't have a whole lot of time so let's just look at a couple verses um go with me to psalm 71 We'll look at a couple more verses here. Psalm 71, verse 23. It says, My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing to you, and my soul which you have redeemed. My tongue also shall talk of your righteousness all the day long, for they are confounded 
for they are brought to shame who seek my hurt. Those who are confounded here are those who are trying to hurt him. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a psalm of David, and he's talking about, in spite of the fact that there are people who are around me who are trying to hurt me and harm me, I am going to let my tongue talk of your righteousness all the day long. I am going in my, in that is, and that is wisdom, because we already said that. When the tongue, righteousness, when you talk of, when, the, when you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, when you are righteous, the righteous will bring forth these words that bring health, that bring wisdom, okay? And so he says, my tongue will talk of your righteousness, of God's righteousness all day long. And what does that do to those people who try to hurt him? They're confounded. When, you know, when people are really scheming and plotting against you in your life, and, you know, some people are paranoid and think everybody's against them, but there are really people who, who try to undermine you. There are really people who try to get under your skin. All of us who have kids, they go through different phases in their life where they on purpose try to get under your skin. And, you know, so, but there are, you know, there are situations like that, and even if you don't think about natural human voices, even the voices of circumstances that are trying to confound you, confuse you, get under your skin, cause you to lose hope, cause you to lose faith, cause you to, to you know, to, to lose your confidence in who you are in Christ and in God, right? And so, you know, those voices become confounded or confused when we speak forth, when we use our words to speak forth the righteousness of God. Because how can it be when you're in the middle of this test and trial, this terrible situation, that you're still talking about a good God? Because the world, and even people who are Christians who are around you, if you're going through stuff, they'll tell you that it must be God's will that you're going through all this hell. No, it's not. You know, the world doesn't understand and sometimes even use this as an excuse for not believing in God because, you know, how can I believe in God who would, you know, let this person die or have this earthquake happen or whatever because they don't understand that God is not in control. They need a Nessa's message from a couple weeks back, you know. They don't understand that. And so, you know, but so what happens is that when you're going through a situation that is a difficult situation for you, uh, eyes are on you. Right. Eyes are watching you. People are watching you. Family members are watching you. Your neighbors are watching you. People who work with you are watching you. People at church are watching you. Uh, people are watching you, okay? And they're watching you to see how you're going to go through the situation. And when you go through the situation in a way that has peace, in a way that has joy, in a way that has, you know, you, I mean, your faith is not shaken because you are speaking forth the righteousness of God, then they get all confused because they don't understand why these things aren't touching you. Just as confused as, you know, those who threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fiery furnace, and they did not understand how they're walking around there in the midst of the fire. How are you walking around in the midst of the fire? How are you coming up out of the fire and you don't even have the smell of smoke on you? How is that even possible? Because, you know, they talked about the righteousness of God. And, you know, and it's the same. It's this verse, you know, lends itself to that same kind of situation. You might be in the midst of the fiery furnace, but you praise God. You talk about his righteousness. You talk about him being a good God. And sometimes that's all. I mean, I mean, with complete and total brokenness in the midst of some of the, the, the deepest despair that I have felt over the last five to ten years. You know, if I cannot even remember sometimes verses to say because, you know, I'm overwhelmed with feelings of grief or anxiety or worry or care or whatever it is that I'm carrying, if all I can do is in that brokenness, if I can just cry out and I can say, God, I believe that you are a good God. You are God. There have been times where I have walked, I've come in here and just walked and prayed and walked and prayed by myself and just cried, and all I've been able to do is just say, God, you are good. God, you are good. God, you are good. And I've had to say that, y'all, for hours, hours, days, hours and days, you know, to pull myself up out of situations that, you know, that the enemy meant for my destruction and for the destruction of my family. And, you know, so how, how is that possible? Because if you're going to be someone who is wise, then you have to understand that these words, these words of God's righteousness that you're speaking out, that it brings forth wisdom and it confuses the enemy, you know? 
It confuses the enemy. It confuses people who are trying to attack you. Like, you know, if your kids are, you know, um, purposely, you know, in their rebellion, they're just trying to get attention in some way, and so they're hurting you, hurting you, hurting you, and they see that you're not phased by this, it will confuse them, you know, and they'll think, wow, you know, mom really does believe in God, you know, and so there's something to God because God, you know, mom is not moved by, you know, this situation. Do you know what I'm saying? And uh, it's nice of you to join us. Um. So, you know, so that's, that's, that's what we need to think about. We need to, be, we need to understand that our words can confound the enemy, whether it's an enemy who's right there in front of us or it's just the devil and his hench demons, you know, trying to, trying to um, create confusion and dismay. Um, and so here's one, one more thing. You know, we started off tonight. We didn't have Anessa here for, let's turn to Psalm 35. We didn't have Anessa here for, you know, to lead us in singing worship tonight. But, you know, our words can, can be worship to God. And so if we are going to be a wise person and use our words wisely, I can't really think of any wiser way than to, to have our words bring praise to Him. Amen. So in Psalm 35, we'll just read verse um, 28. Well, now let's read uh, 27. It says, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause and let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. You know what? I mean, you start to prosper. Don't be talking about how great you are. (laughs) You talk about how great my God is. He's got pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Amen. And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all the day long. That just goes back with the other, the other verse that we read a minute ago. You know, we need to, you know, sometimes it gets on my nerves when people say, I'm just going to, I'll just, you know, be honest since we're in church and everything. But um, it gets on my nerves when people say, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, all the time without really thinking about what they're saying. Because some people say that just the same way some other people say, well, you know what I mean? I mean, they don't really, it just becomes a, it becomes a platitude. It's just a, a religious you know, catchphrase, it's just something people say, and so, you know, when they say, praise God this, praise God that, praise God, praise God is like the, you know, it's like the beginning, and some people go, um, other people say, praise God, okay, it doesn't mean anything to them, because they have stopped using it in a way that really is praising God, you know, I mean, when Pastor Bill goes, well, glory, I know that he's really, you know, that's really what he means, you know, I mean, he's really giving God glory for whatever it is that he's going well glory for. But, you know, but other people, like, I mean, I have family members that, you know, they love God. They're, you know, they're very committed and faithful in their relationship with God. But they just say, praise God, like, you know, every five or six words. And they're not really praising God. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's just religious. And that's irritating. And not only is it irritating, but I don't think that it really it doesn't have that same effect as bringing about a good witness because people who are not born again, that just becomes, you know, something that's weird to them. Okay? But we have this opportunity to sing praises to him throughout the day, to speak forth words that offer him praise when we mean it really truly in that way. I'm going to purposely say, praise God. And not just, oh, well, praise God this, and da 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 praise God this, and praise God that, da 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 praise God, praise God. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, that's the difference. I mean, we're talking about using our words wisely. I mean, all of our words. Even if the words are intended to be words that are good, we still have to use good words wisely. Amen. You have to use, you know, you have to have the wisdom not to say things that you shouldn't say, but you also have to have the wisdom to know how to say the things that you should say. Right. All right? So, um, so, yeah, so as you... Uh, go about your business over the next, you know, couple weeks and you're around all your family members, use your words wisely. Just think about that. Oh, I wanted to show you something real quick. Here, since you're here and you weren't doing anything else the rest of the time tonight, come be my volunteer. We got two minutes. Here. All right. I'm going to hold this plate. You take the toothpaste. All right. Now, Nessa, I want you to squeeze some toothpaste on this plate however much you want. Just however much. As much as you want. Okay, she's going to be frugal, so she's going to put just that amount on there. I would have just, like, squeezed the whole thing. <laughs> All right, okay, now, what I need you to do is I need you to, you see that? I need you to take that toothpaste and put it back in that tube right there. <laughs> and why not? It just came out of that tube.
You, if you try, try and get it, what would happen if she tries to get all that back in there? She's going to make a big old mess. And is there going to be some, is there still going to be some residue on this plate? That's your words. However, however many of those words that come out of your mouth, you're not going to get them back. Okay. So be frugal with your words. Use them wisely, right? Because you can't put them back once you, once you let them out. Because even if you do scrape them all in there, you're going to get it all over yourself. You're going to make a big mess. You're still going to waste some stuff. You're going to smell like that peppermint for days, right? And there's still going to be residue left. Use your words wisely. Amen? All right. Y'all are dismissed.